If you're looking to get away from the brash, blingtastic, man-made side of Dubai, then perhaps the best place to start is down at the creek, the natural seawater inlet that cuts through the historical centre of the city. For around a dollar, I took an Abra, one of the small water taxis that crossed the creek, and enjoyed the centuries-old sight of the traditional dhows that still ply ancient trade routes. My five-minute trip deposited me at the Spice Souk, thin alleyways pungent with the aroma of dried lemons and cinnamon sticks, where I met up with my guide to the alternative Dubai, Time Out editor Ross Brown. We have gold souks, silver souks. Gold here is especially cheap, white gold in particular. And there's fish souks, there's silk and spice souks. I mean, there's everything. And if you're a first-timer like me, Ross has a few tips. It's the unwritten rule of the souk. You don't pay the asking price. The thing with haggling and bargaining is there's a lot of pride involved. If you just dig in and you're dealing with men, it's their trade and they think that, you know, you're, you're not playing the game, it can get quite frosty quite quickly. It's a big act, you know. You're, you're thinking about it, oh, they might have been cheaper next door. Mm, could you get it cheaper at home? That's always a great one. They'll just knock 10% off straight away. In the heat of the afternoon, we found ourselves a world away from the towering cityscape that characterises this startlingly forward-looking place. This is the Bastikia, which is built on the spot of the original fishing village um, at the mouth of the creek. And this is the style that Dubai would have been back in the day, with these tremendous wind towers that go right up. And the idea isn't that they look nice, it's that they capture the wind and draw it down. These long, thin streets provide a lot of shadow. And in the summer, when you've got to imagine 50 degrees C is horrific, and back in the day, it would have been just desert and sand and heat. So they really work to provide a little bit of tranquility in an otherwise very inhospitable place. For Mona Hauser, it was the obvious spot to set up her small hotel and gallery, to provide an intimate atmosphere in a place where bigger is generally viewed as better. Bastikia is the soul of Dubai, I think. Um, it's completely, completely opposite, uh, the towers, and um, it's, it's a restored community that I think is very precious. The gallery shows work from artists from all over the Arab world, including Mahmoud Hamadani. Dubai, in a way, is a, is a hub. People from all over the world come here. In that sense, it's a very attractive place to show one's work. All that art appreciation can make you hungry, so Ross led the way. So this is one of your favourite places then? Oh, I absolutely love it here. Once you, uh, once you get away off the beaten track, you know, it's easy to eat in the malls, they've all got food courts, and it's easy to eat in a lot of the nice restaurants. But if you search, you'll find some incredible places. And the Batawi Cafe is just one of those places. It's a real Indonesian hangout, it's an Indonesian restaurant. I've been down here before, you can't get a seat because it's been full of Indonesian sailors. Once the boats come in, they just pile down here. The food's that authentic. Good luck. This is soup batawi, which is a signature dish of the restaurant itself. It starts like as this kind of quite creamy beef, cabbage, succulent soup. The great thing about here is they only use ingredients from Indonesia. It looks lovely. A bit of crunch. Mm. It's got so many flavours in it. Now there are countless bars and clubs in Dubai, but I've heard that this one is a little bit special and something of a favourite with the locals. A chance to learn the ancient Dubai art of salsa dancing. An interesting and unpredictable day without a beach, top-end hotel or giant shopping centre in sight.